Did you know that your voice, yes, yours, is one of your most powerful tools for self-care? It doesn't matter if you've never had a lesson or if you feel you can't sing in tune. If you can physically hum or make a sound, you can use the hidden power of your voice for relaxation, restoration, and transformation. Let's begin. Hello lovely ones, this is Livia. I'm a professional opera singer, singing teacher, and founder of Singing for Self Care, where we embrace singing for health and personal transformation. You may be asking, what does singing have to do with self-care? Singing is this beautiful thing that can have a positive impact on us physically, mentally, socially, and even spiritually. So here we're using singing for non-musical goals as a tool to feel rested, rejuvenated, and to happily function at our best ability. Although <laughs> you may find that your voice improves as an added bonus. So rather than thinking of music passively as something that happens to us, we learn about how we can utilize singing um, for these non-musical goals. Number one, it doesn't require training. So this may seem like a really strange thing to say as a singing teacher, but when it comes to our intention of singing for self-care, it's a little bit like what people say about having a bikini body. So you have a body, and then you simply just put on a bikini. So similarly, if you can make a sound, you're more than qualified to sing for self-care. So many of us have past programming that our voices don't have value. So perhaps you were told when you were a child that you had an ugly singing voice, or maybe someone made fun of you when you were really singing your heart out in the car one day, and that hurt your feelings a bit. These experiences are sadly very common and they can have a lasting impact on people's relationship with their voice. So much like the bikini example, voice shaming is a branch of body shaming. Your voice is produced by your body after all. So remind yourself, there is absolutely nothing wrong with your voice. Let go of what you think your voice should sound like. Your voice is you and you're the only person in the world who sounds like you. And that's really a very, very special thing. Number two, it's neural dense. Singing is one of the most neural dense things we can possibly do as humans. So this means that we're engaging a lot of different parts of the brain as we sing. The cool thing about this is that certain elements of singing technique are affecting different parts of the brain. So for example, singing has a direct impact on our uh, autonomic nervous system, which is responsible for our feelings of relaxation and peace. Singing also has a positive effect on our hormones. If you're interested in learning more about all of this, I take a deep dive into how singing affects the brain. And with that understanding, how we can use singing to actually improve our health. Uh, so my course is called Singing for Self-Care, Biohacking Your Brain with Singing. I'll put a link in the description. Number three, it communicates something deeper. Singing has the power to plunge into our unconscious mind. So while singing activates our prefrontal cortex, so that's where we process thoughts and we analyze things, it also works in deeper and more ancient parts of the brain as well. So oftentimes when we sing, we connect with this inner universe of emotions below the surface. And we can get into this state of flow where we're just expressing ourselves freely and genuinely. By its very nature, you can't rationally wrangle with your unconscious mind. So when we sing without like thinking, <laughs> as in not using our analytical brain, we have the ability to reach a little bit deeper. And at the end of a singing session, you know, we actually might come to an understanding of a pattern or a behavior or just an understanding of a situation in our lives that we may not have arrived at had we tried to nut out the problem with more analytical thinking or even something like journaling alone. Number four, it's portable. Sure, so belting out in the middle of a supermarket might not 
be the best thing in the world. But there are many aspects of singing for self-care that can be done silently or with very, very little noise. So for example, an important aspect of singing is obviously the breath. So with singing, we aim to take deep diaphragmatic breaths, which is sometimes referred to in meditation as belly breathing. So you can obviously do this absolutely anywhere. You could be cooking your dinner, you could be driving your car, you could be doing your shopping, or maybe you want to get focused and calm before walking into a job interview, or maybe there's a situation where you know you're going to be under a lot of pressure. So taking a few diaphragmatic breaths has a very calming effect on the autonomic nervous system. If you want to vocalize, humming or semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, which basically is just a fancy way of saying singing with your mouth partially closed, you can do with uh, humming or with a straw, is a very easy and gentle way of vocalizing. And it's, a, it's much quieter and discreet than full on uh, singing if you're in a situation where you can't make too much noise. Number five, it's social. It's thought that singing evolved out of a need for human connection. And this is mirrored with the pleasure hormones released as we sing, especially as we sing with a group. Singing can be a social activity that connects us with our community. And this sense of connectedness is very important for our mental health. If you're watching this video in the time of COVID-19, where there are restrictions on group singing, don't fret. So even with physical distancing, we can still enjoy singing together. You can join a virtual choir or even explore things like duet with me type videos on TikTok or small. Not to mention, you can always just crank up your favorite song and sing with your favorite singers. And maybe, who knows, you could have fun experimenting with different harmonies. If you happen to be watching this video a little bit later and we've thankfully seen the end of the pandemic, uh, consider joining a singing circle or a choir or a band or any other musical group is just a fantastic way to reap the social sided benefits of singing for self-care. Number six, it's an anchor for meditation. If you're familiar with meditation and chances are if you saw self-care for this video and, and you clicked, uh, you may know that meditation requires a thought anchor. So this is the point that you always gently return the spotlight of your attention to when your mind starts to wander. So a lot of the time, this may be with the breath. So as your mind inevitably wanders to another thought, you just notice this and then you gently refocus on your breath. So as I mentioned before, with singing being such an important part of singing, you can absolutely choose the breath as your anchor. But you can also choose to use vocalizations instead. So the wonderful thing about using vocalization as a meditation anchor is that it is so versatile. With singing, you have this added sensory feedback in your body. So as you breathe out to sing, you could focus on the vibrations that you're creating with your voice. You could think to yourself, where am I feeling these vibrations in my body? How do they relate to my breathing pattern? What if I sing loudly or softly? What if I sing a higher pitch or a lower pitch? So this curious, non-judgmental and relaxed exploration of our bodies is extremely healthy for us. It has the power to rewire some of our negative self-talk and judgments and we can just enjoy the moment. If you enjoy meditation with guided imagery, you can very simply add vocalizing to this as well. For example, in my guided meditations on this channel, if we have the intention of, say, feeling grounded, we may sing in a downwards pitch uh, to support that guided imagery. Typically, if you're adding vocalizations to your meditation, it's best to choose something that's very simple and very repetitive, like humming or singing R, whatever vowel you like, <laughs> um, on a single note. But of course, you can feel absolutely free to experiment and make it as complicated <laughs> as not as you want. You can also choose to incorporate mantras into your meditation. And that's something that has been practiced in Eastern countries for centuries. These are essentially sung affirmations which act as the anchor of your meditation. Number seven, it's spiritual. 
Coming off my previous point about mantras, singing in meditation is also a deeply spiritual practice. So chanting is shared by many cultures and religions throughout the world. You have the classic example of Om in Hindu tradition, but singing mantras is also practiced in Buddhism, Taoism, Sikhism, uh, Jainism, Christianity with the Gregorian chants that are all very beautiful. You can use chanting in any way that aligns with your faith. And this also includes chanting in a completely secular or non-religious way. One of my favorite ways of incorporating singing into my meditation is with the use of singing affirmations over and over. But as we look at singing through a spiritual lens, we don't even need to use words. Singing in itself, embracing our emotions and feeling connected to something bigger than ourselves, whether that be God, source energy, the universe, our collective consciousness, humanity, whatever you call it, whatever that means to you, it's a doorway to experience spiritual growth. And this is sometimes overlooked, but it's a deeply important part of our self-care practice. Number eight, it develops a skill. When you sing regularly as part of your self-care practice, guess what you're indirectly doing? You're practicing. <laughs> so that may not feel like what you're doing. Perhaps in your head, you think that singing practice is doing scales or going over the same phrase over and over again. And yeah, sure. That can sometimes be true when we're practicing with something technical in mind. But despite our concentration and intention being different when we use singing for self-care, we're still reaping the technical benefits. For example, if you are spending, say, 15 minutes a day solely focused on diaphragmatic breathing or perhaps uh, the sensation of keeping your hum completely constant on a, a nice smooth exhalation, you are having an impact on your singing. These are fundamental parts of singing technique. So in your meditative practice, you are subconsciously actually improving your singing voice at least at the same time. Number nine, it helps with our sense of self. So remember back in point one, when I mentioned the self-limiting beliefs many of us have surrounding our voices, it can go beyond about being shamed about what our voices actually sound like and can go deeper into our sense of self and our expression. Maybe you were told to shut up and be quiet a lot as a child. Maybe your ideas or your passions were laughed at. Maybe people will constantly talk over you or gaslight you or make you feel small. There's countless factors in our lives which people, you know, it might make us feel like our feelings don't matter. Maybe you have issues expressing your needs or your boundaries or just saying no to people. When you feel like you can't express yourself freely, how is that reflected in your sense of self? Do you feel undeserving, unseen, unloved? When you bring singing into your self-care practice, not only are you reclaiming your physical voice and its sound, you're also reclaiming your essence. It's what makes you, you. You're relearning that it's okay to express what's in your heart and your mind, which brings me to my next point. Number 10, it holds space. Your self-care practice is time for you. It's a self-created space where you can safely express whatever you need to. Singing allows you to explore your own feelings, sensations, and thoughts in so many different ways. Singing is a wonderful way of exploring emotions without judgment and then just letting them go. With singing and creating sound, you're also taking up more space. So not only are we taking up more physical space when uh, you know we're breathing deeply and expansively, but our voices are also radiating out and you're taking up more space with sound waves as well. We have this beautiful tool to work past habits of withholding our opinions, ideas, and thoughts. The expansive nature we can feel with singing encourages us to express ourselves unapologetically. Your voice is valid. You are valid. Point number 11, it's free. I mean, there's not much to elaborate on here. It's your body and you have complete agency. You don't need to shell out like cash for clothes or a massage or something to treat yourself. Although those things are totally fun core as well. Singing with the intention of self-care is something that you can do anytime, any place and for zero cost. 
yet it weighs heavily in value. That's it. <laughs> you may have noticed that this is actually the very first video released on this channel. <laughs> Comment down below, where in the world are you watching this from? And please say hello and I will make sure I say hello back. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video and want more tips and guidance uh, on singing for self-care, as well as uniquely crafted guided singing meditations, make sure you like this video and subscribe. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.